This is absolutely terrible. Not that long ago, I thought I was the happiest person in this world, but then I turned out in big trouble. It's not even clear who my enemy is anymore. Hi, everyone. My name is April, and I'm 14 years old. I lost my faith in people because of one mistake I made. My parents and I often argued because we didn't understand each other at all. They controlled my every step, didn't let me go out late or to sleepovers. But most importantly, they absolutely didn't like my friends. Every time I went out for a walk with them, my mom would throw a fit. One time she even locked me in and refused to let me out. I cried for two days after that because I'd missed my friend's birthday. For some reason, my parents thought my friends were troublemakers, enemies, and a bad influence on me. And that morning was the worst one of my life. I spent half the night crying into my pillow over another fight with my mom, slept through my alarm, and was almost too late for the school bus. Maybe everything happened because of that. Or maybe my insomnia was to blame. As soon as I got on the school bus, my eyes closed. I didn't even notice falling asleep. And I woke up in a horror movie. Well, I was in some garage, but I got quite a scare before I realized that. However, even having realized where I was, I didn't feel any calmer at all. I had been on my way to school, but I found myself in a locked bus, all alone and in the dark. I was lucky to have a flashlight on my watch. At least I didn't break my nose while pushing on the buttons on the bus panel to try to get out of the vehicle. But after I got out, I broke down again because I didn't recognize anything around me. I was on some street and there was a strange house and I didn't know where I was or what I was doing there. An elderly woman came out of the house and explained what had happened. It turned out that the bus driver just hadn't noticed me. He had driven students to the school as usual and then gone to a nearby town to visit his relatives. The woman was saying something about a hospital, but I wasn't really listening to her. I was more interested in something else. I was in another city. I was just about to ask that old lady for help when she slammed the door in my face. And then it turned out my adventure had been doomed since the very beginning because I had no money, didn't know the city, and the passerbys were in no hurry to save a lonely teenage girl. And as if that wasn't enough, my mobile phone beeped in my pocket and then died. I couldn't even imagine what my parents would do to me if I didn't get home from school on time. I was terribly cold, wanted some food and to get home. I was also very scared because I had no idea what I was supposed to do. I simply hid at a bus stop under a street lamp and started crying. But apparently, miracles do happen because I was saved in the end. A guy came up to me and introduced himself as Alex. When he heard that I was in trouble, he didn't leave me. First, he bought me a burger at a nearby cafe, and then brought me to the train station and sat me on my bus. However, when I realized I had somehow been saved, the desire to go back home suddenly disappeared. The thought of trouble waiting for me there came back and ruined my mood. If they yelled at me just for being an hour late a couple days in a row, what would I be in for now? It turned out, nothing. I got home at night, but there were no lights in the windows, no police officers with dogs, none of that. My parents' cars also weren't there. Judging by the empty trash cans near the house, they hadn't been at home since early morning. So I just quietly walked into the house and went to bed. In the morning, I found out that no one had really noticed my disappearance. My parents had some problems at work, so they had more important things to worry about than me. They had remained unaware of my small adventure. But I really needed to tell someone about it. And I thought, why not tell my friends? Of course, it would be our big secret. I invited them for a walk and absolutely everyone loved my story. My friends decided that my adventure had been wildly cool. After all, I'd been completely alone, hung out in a strange city, came back, and it hadn't even been scolded. Plus, I met a nice guy. Yeah, I left out the part about me sobbing and feeling terrified like I was lost forever. And from their point of view, my nightmare really did seem like a great adventure that anyone would want a repeat of. I'd survived on my own, hadn't I? I had. Came home by myself, hadn't I? I had. And as for the details, what did they matter anyway? Besides, Alex, the guy who'd helped me, texted me the same day. He texted first. He asked how I was doing and then suggested that we keep texting each other since I live in another city. And that's how this whole story abruptly turned from a nightmare into a romantic one. We kept in touch. At first, it was a couple of texts a day. But a week later, I was literally never putting my phone down. Alex turned out to be the sweetest and most amazing guy ever. He was so cool, interesting, and funny. He told me different stories about him, paid me compliments, wished me a good morning and a good night every single day. I realized that I really, really liked him. 
and not as a friend at all, and that I would really like to be with him, or at least just meet him again. Also, I'd shown our text to my friends, and they said that he would soon grow tired of texting, and he'd find another girl living closer to him. But what could I do? Only text him more often. And then I came to a decision. If distance was the problem, why couldn't I come to him? After all, I had already done it once, and it had been fun. Well, uh, sort of. But now, I knew exactly where and to whom I would be going. And I was 100% sure that he'd be waiting for me. I decided to properly prepare. I broke my piggy bank, put on makeup, dressed myself up, and even managed to convince the school bus driver to take me with him. I told him that I really needed to go to the next city to visit my relatives. I mentally gave myself a medal for my spy skills because my parents didn't notice anything. Again! And everything turned out just fine. Alex met me at the bus stop and we went for a walk. I was so happy to see him. In real life, he was so much more handsome than I remembered. And so cute. It was the best date I'd ever been on in my life. We walked around the city, holding hands, talking and laughing. And then we went to a cozy cafe and continued the date in a more romantic atmosphere. I was sure that he would definitely kiss me. And I was really looking forward to it because it would be my first kiss. But I had to leave for a moment. I really needed to use the bathroom. And when I came back, I realized that Alex was gone. I thought he'd also gone to the bathroom, but then why had he left our things unattended? That's when I realized there were no things, neither his nor mine, near the table. Had someone stolen them? What was going on? I decided I would wait for Alex. It was his city, he was older, and he probably knew what he was doing. I sat in that cafe for three hours. It was only when they started giving me side glances that I realized Alex wasn't coming back. There hadn't been any mystery fee. Just Alex, who had abandoned me and taken my bag with all my money and my phone. I was in so much pain. I had really believed that he'd liked me back. What was worse, I didn't have any money to pay for our lunch, and the waitress had already come up to me five times asking me whether I wanted her to bring the bill. At some point, I realized that I couldn't sit there any longer, and I simply ran away. I waited until everyone was looking away, and then I jumped up from the table and I ran to the exit. The guard rushed after me and almost caught up to me, but at the last moment, I managed to hide in an alley. After that, I spent a long time sobbing from resentment and humiliation there. I had no money or phone once again, only now, I wasn't hoping for a miracle. I'd had quite enough of those. I just wanted to go home. Just like last time, passerbys didn't care about the lonely and unhappy me. I came up to everyone, asking to borrow their phones. I wanted to call my friends and ask them to save me. But everyone, absolutely everyone, turned away, were rude, and pretended like I didn't exist. It wasn't until I was feeling completely desperate that some kind old man let me make one phone call. I called one of my friends, the one whose number I remembered, and through tears, I asked for help. He calmed me down and we agreed that I would be in a park sitting under some notable monument and waiting. I was sure that my friends would definitely save me because, well, we were friends. It turned out that I didn't understand people at all, and also that it was terrifying to spend a night on a bench in a park in an unfamiliar city. Even just the thought of having to wait a little longer didn't help. Luckily for me, some police officers were passing by, and when they heard that I was lost, they took me to a police station. I warmed up, calmed down a little, and I explained everything that had happened to me. I even showed them a photo of Alex, just in case. And they told me something terrible. Alex wasn't even his real name, and he was much older than 16. He was a well-known criminal who did things like this, gaining people's trust and then stealing their things and their money. The police were only surprised by how young I was. They even asked me several times if I needed to contact my parents. But I told them that my friends would be coming to pick me up because I still believed that. I had to spend the night at the police station. It was terribly embarrassing and humiliating. In the morning, help finally arrived. It's just that those who came weren't my friends. I ran out of the police station and found myself looking at my terribly worried parents. They immediately started hugging me and checking if I was really okay. And we returned home together and there with tears and hugs. My parents told me about coming home and finding me gone. They'd called all my friends, spent the whole night searching for me, and by some miracle found the bus driver who'd admitted to taking me to the city. And then they spent a long time calling all the police stations in that town until they'd finally found me. I was so happy to be home. I didn't even think about where my friends were. Why hadn't anyone come? Or at least told my parents where I'd been. That was when my heart finally broke. 
It turned out that none of them had even tried to save me. While I'd been sitting in that park and then at the police station believing my friends would help, they hadn't even cared. The friend that I had called had just hung up and gone to bed. And the others had decided that my problems were only my problems and I had to deal with them myself. And that's how one bad trip broke me. Now, I don't believe in friendship or love anymore because I don't think they actually exist. But I do believe that I have the most wonderful parents who will always help me when I'm in trouble. We made up and I asked them for their forgiveness. And now I listen to what they say to me. After all, they clearly understand people much better than I do.